What if I told you there's much more about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom out there that Nintendo didn't show today? You just got to know where to find it. What if I told you that there was much more detail on the systems, the features, and the dungeons of Tears of the Kingdom, but Nintendo didn't want to say it. That's what this video is about, and it's pretty freaking exciting. Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. An amazing Zelda reveal, but more lurking that I will uncover for you. Now, there's a bunch of good stuff to say about the Pro Controller, which I'll be adding to my beautiful Pro Controller collection, and the Switch OLED, <laughs> that green Joy-Con ain't so hot. I'm going to try not to get it. No promises, I'm going to try. But we gotta talk about the extra info. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Super pumped to be here. Zelda is going to be major and massive because, I mean, it is. Like, it's freaking Zelda. And there was a leak a while back that indicated so much shown in today's trailer. We're going to talk about it and give you the rest of the goods. Now, I will make the caveat that you always have to make that this is a leak and therefore grain of salt but the fact that this person this leaker seven days before today's gameplay reveal knew exactly what would be shown in the gameplay reveal that says something and i have to think that there's a knowledge a knowing and a truth here that gets me insanely excited so we're gonna dive in we're gonna cover it i got my zelda ears we are ready this looks a little bit like Spock. We are ready to party like it's the beginning of Switch Force, where Switch Force did <laughs> Switch Force did have the Triforce as the big uh the big idea behind the logo and the name. There were three of us. It's a triangle. This moment has been in Switch Force lore since before its inception, and we've reached it, and I'm telling you. It's going to be so huge for our community. And this is only the beginning. No, no photos, please. I know. I know it's a look, but... Okay, fine. Take all the photos you want. You're going to be seeing a lot of these ears. This is Zelda Tears of the Kingdom doubling down and getting deeper. If you want to know why the gameplay was so freaking great and how I think it's Nintendo revolutionizing Zelda and honestly, just taking that to the competition and saying, look, you may have a PS5, but we have the brains and the brilliance of the best designers in the world. I made a full video on that. You can see WTF just happened. But today, let's talk about this leak and let's see how it gives us more information on what Tears of the Kingdom actually may be. Now, what's extra interesting here is this was posted on March 21st, a week before today's gameplay reveal and well before Nintendo even announced the gameplay reveal. So we are to assume that this person either works in one of the places where they would have seen this video or instead works on the game where they would know about this stuff without knowing about or seeing the video itself. That was a pre-recorded video. There is, in all likelihood, a good chance that it was around a week ago. So this person could have seen that video, but even if they just saw that video, to me that means that they now have to be in the know because they talked all about the glue, the fusing, the crafting, the vehicles, and the weapons. They dove deep into how you can now use horns, enemy items, materials to craft, repair, change weapons. Now, I know I didn't dive into the repair systems, but we did see a huge emphasis on the fusing. We saw a huge emphasis on the crafting, and we saw that applied to both weapons you pick up and find, how that modifies arrows, and I'm sure there are many more systems. Now, looking into this leak, it says, that you'll be able to change weapons at certain shops found across the map, including alongside crafting and repairing. If we're to infer, that means that there's going to be ways to probably modify weapons or double down on weapons or improve them at shops as well as in the world. So maybe there are certain parts you can buy. I wonder if it's like, hey, you could like steelify this weapon or solidify this weapon, lock it in to give it more durability if you could maybe even buy parts from a vendor and add those onto your weapons rather than just find them in the world if the crafting goes that deep and it does according to this leak which has so much more validity now that we know that that's all in there they talk about the vehicles as well they say the crafting system is extremely extremely extensive and covers both weapons and vehicles you can even add weapons such as cannons to the vehicles 
And we did see them add battery powered devices, motors, effectively fans to the boat. Adding cannons to vehicles then is no far stretch. There are a large quantity of parts and pieces found across the game that are used in combination with a sort of glue, and we now know this to be true. There's Ultra Hand, there's Fuse, and it's a way to use the green globs to stick things on. It's a very extensive system, and that rings totally true. There's a bit of story exposition as well, it says. They don't go into details, um, but the physics system really shines here, as we saw in today's gameplay. If you can think of it, and you're able to gather the parts, you can really build it. You can now hitch wagons to your horse in order to travel around and pick up large vehicle pieces like wheels, body pieces such as crates and slabs, and the like. And that makes sense, because we saw Link luck into, wow, there's some trees and logs right here by the river. But that was clearly an early game and simple example to showcase the mechanic for the video. In actuality, Tears of the Kingdom will probably have all sorts of challenges that require much more explorative thought, much more imagination, and honestly, much more distance. So the fact that they now will have carts in there to carry these items and to move them back makes a ton of sense. It can't just be that, oh, what's laying in front of you builds the vehicle. That would be very boring and very obvious and not very imaginative. It's clear that Nintendo and Aonuma want imagination and creativity to be at the center of this Zelda. And so I totally buy into and believe that you can bring these parts via these wagons and your horse has more purpose than just transporting you. It now is transporting other things. They also talk about how gear storage has been implemented in various locations, including Link's house. You can store clothing, weapons, or even food and materials for later use. Now, we did not see this in the game, but I wouldn't doubt that it's in there. It also says that when weapons become broken, they stay in your inventory in a broken state until you repair them. Storing them allows you to free up your inventory so you can store them in these boxes or whatever located in the various locations around Hyrule and then later repair them with some sort of special repair goo glue juice. Now, they don't show this in the gameplay, and I wonder how they will handle this. We do see the break effect happen on screen, like the visual effect, and it does say this tree branch is broken, but we see nothing of the inventory management or what happens to that weapon in today's gameplay reveal. So this could give more insight and sort of finalize what does happen in the way of durability. They also say that every piece of armor and clothing from the first game returns, including DLC ones. There's a plethora of new ones. And now there is an extra category, head, top, and bottom, and now footwear. Every piece of armor in the game can be dyed, and certain pieces will have alternate looks you can change in the menu. So the crafting that we've seen on vehicles and on weapons doesn't seem as extensive within clothing. It's not like you're fusing this leaf and then this ratty eyeball to make a strange armband. It just seems like you can dye them, so there's more customization. And alternate looks, maybe you can fuse something with. So maybe if you fuse, like, ice material with a certain outfit, it adds the property of being able to be more cold resistant. Or maybe it just changes up the look. Perhaps you can fuse in the menu, like we saw with the arrows, an enemy body part, an enemy horn with a piece of gear to give it a new layer. If you can, that will be insanely sick. I predict it's more just like dyeing the color and maybe changing some of the stats and or like overall look like, oh, ice gives it an ice look. I don't know that we'll be able to nuancely add in like horns and claws and fangs and make our gear like all sorts of sick, although that would be insane and I wouldn't put it past them. And you can have alternate looks such as putting up your hood, wearing or removing a cape, and as shown on some of the Nintendo Twitter accounts, the paraglider is also customizable. We did see Link use the paraglider in... The, the gameplay it clearly is a big part of it, and those alternate looks do seem to be smaller scale. So to me, it seems like vehicles and weapons are going to be in a tier of their own, and then customization is added indeed for, for armor and gear, but it's going to be lower, expanded, but lower. They do say that you will also be able to use dyes, gems, and other materials to customize the look of weapons as you see fit. Because they are able to be repaired now, it's logical that you may find a sword you grow fond of, and perhaps you want to change the color of its hilt, blade, or sheath, or add a different material to its hilt or sheath to change its look altogether. So because weapons now can be built on the fly, fused, I think they want you to fall in love with certain weapons and not feel like it's a limited time thing. Repair definitely adds to that, and then also this ability to apparently change the color of the hilt, the blade, the sheath, uh, add different materials to change its look altogether, is going to allow you to customize these fused weapons in more ways than just a basic, oh, I have a stick and a boulder, it's a stammer. Now I can pick it up, now I can enhance it, now I can gemify it, now I can dye it, now I can build it, and so it really is doubling down on building weapons in a way 
that personalize them, right? You get to be imaginative and create them, craft them, but then you also get to make them your own in a more extensive way. They include bows and shields and new types such as cannon weapons and others not debuted in the gameplay. So an extensive array of weapons, obviously you can make so many, right? So obviously you can make sword type creations. We saw them fuse a long stick with a pitchfork and make a super spear. I'm sure there'll be a lot of very unique and exciting ways to weld weapons together. And I'm hoping that even from bosses or bigger enemies, there's maybe some special parts that we can help use to make very like, like rare weapons, right? I know there's not like a loot system here, like orange, purple, yellow, blue, but if you think about it, a tree branch is gonna be very common. Perhaps the, the blade arm of a specific boss or the motor of a specific mechanized warrior is going to be unique. And maybe that allows you to craft different vehicles and different weapons that would only be available by defeating that boss and specifically using that part. The crux here, I think, is that repair system that allows you to have longevity and friendship with your weapons. Because fusing that willy-nilly and then just having them break and that's it, that is still insanely cool. But I think the ability to develop a style, build an arsenal, and basically arm Link in a way that you love to, to do is really special. And you can experiment, ditch, try again, really kind of roll the dice but once you hit the wheel on the spot you like, then being able to take those weapons, enhance them, develop them, and really make them your own is, is very neat. Because a branch and a boulder is a branch and a boulder for everybody, but a blue and green branch and boulder that lays a gemstone that gives it extra fire damage, that's mine. Now, here is what you probably really want to hear, because it's something that was not shown in the gameplay at all. And in fact, it's something I thought they would tease much more overtly. Dungeons are a question we've been asking since BOTW. Will they be included in the sequel? And if you take this leak at face value based on the confirmed fusing, crafting, vehicle making systems, they say in spirit with how Breath of the Wild was able to be completed in various ways, doing things in different orders or even not at all, the same can be done with many things in Tears of the Kingdom. More traditional dungeons do indeed make a return and there are a substantial amount of them with smaller shrine-like ones supplementing them as well. So we're saying shrines out, dungeons in, and mini dungeons as well. Again, it's something that we've predicted and thought about, but if we believe that this leak is in on it and it's saw, seen the video and knows development, then hey, dungeons in is a sigh of huge relief. It says that the dungeons and mini dungeons can be completed in any order, with only dungeons being mandatory to complete the game, the many smaller shrine-like dungeons are optional. You will find sections in each dungeon that cannot be explored without the use of something that is obtained in another one sort of like dungeon items. This is the way that they lock off certain areas of the dungeon and encourage retreads, encourage re-exploration, encourage you to go back and even if you can do them in any order, there are elements and challenges and items and things locked behind gates or puzzles that can only be accomplished with other dungeon items. If you happen to already have that item, boom, you're in luck. If you don't, you can come back later when you figure out how to solve it. I think puzzle solving in this game is going to take on a whole new look. Given the extensive crafting system and the ability to fuse things together with Ultra Hand, in theory, we could do that with so many items in the game. It would allow for navigational solutions to many puzzles, as well as just straight up interesting ways to deform and reform the environment to help traverse, help climb, help defeat, help just organize, help rebuild, help do so many different types of tasks that I could see these dungeons really investing in a complete new way of approaching puzzles. What's most exciting though is dungeons being back and the fact that you can accomplish them in any order, which is something that Link Between Worlds attempted and I'd say was decently successful. I feel like the ability to go back and sort of explore these areas that maybe have new weapon parts or difficult challenges or a side boss or an item, even just currency, is a useful way to incorporate, hey, some sort of progression within the dungeon. But the idea that you can backtrack these dungeons, the fact that you can do them in any order, the fact that you have to complete them, but not the mini ones, those, like it really does feel like this game has flexibility. I do hope that the dungeon structure feels extensive. The Divine Beasts didn't really have difficulty gradings. The Divine Beasts were fun, but the Divine Beasts ended up being kind of not as, not as big as I think a lot of players wanted. I hope that these are more difficult. I hope that there are at least some that stand as sort of like, oh, a three-star dungeon, a two-star dungeon, a one-star, like even though they can be completed in any order, I do hope there's some that seem daunting or you need a better grasp of the game systems, Link's powers to really be able to complete in style. But I do love that dungeons are back and 
that would be like the greatest confirmation for this game left, right? To me, the crafting and the glue is so exciting, but getting dungeons is sort of the big kahuna. Now, the last piece of this leak that I want to touch on is this campfire idea. Similar to how you could drop wood and light it on fire to create a campfire to sit and skip time, you can now set up an actual tent in the wild and sleep for the night. By setting up this camp, you gain access to a cooking pot and some other mechanics as well. You can still set up basic campfires too, as you need additional materials to craft camping kits. Because this makes cooking more easily available than just finding a cooking pot, eating food has been changed to not be allowed while in active combat and certain other situations. Now, I do want to bring up, as I said at the top, like this still is in league territory. The only part of this that makes me question is at least this one to me. Because in the gameplay we saw today, it looks like up on the D-pad is going to be your chomp button, right? It shows an apple and it seems like it'll be eat food. That button is not grayed out in combat when Link is fighting any of the creations that we see uh, in the video. Now, perhaps you'd hit that up and it would do doom doom, doom doom, and not allow you to do it. And it would, it would sort of create a nullify sound effect that prevents you from eating. But the fact that it's not grayed out, the fact that it still shows up there, the fact that it's part of the UI... I wonder if you can eat when you're fighting the constructs. That would go against the last element of this leak, but there's too much here that has been proven correct by the gameplay that I do believe that most of this, if not all of it, is true. If I had to bet, I would say that things discussed here will be in the game. I just want to point out that I do have concern with the eat, not eating in combat given how it was debuted and showed in the gameplay, at least how the UI was debuted. Let me know if you feel suspicious or if you think there's another way, something I'm missing of how eating would not be allowed. But otherwise, if this leak is in line with everything we saw today, then dungeons, super extensive customization, and the glorious weapon crafting, vehicle crafting systems are going to be an absolute riot to play with on May 12th. And I cannot wait to explore all of them with you. This gives you more detail and more hopefully exciting information that we will uncover once the game actually drops. I don't think there's any way Nintendo goes into all of this, but I do hope that it's in there and somehow they knew about all of this fusing stuff. Somehow they knew about all the glue and the vehicles and the items and the weapons. So take it for what you will, but there's a likelihood that much of this is in the game. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive, everybody. Love you so much. Until next time, Switch Force out.